Hey guys, this is Brian, and today I'm going to be introducing a new video series that I'm going to be putting out where I basically go over some of the tweets that I feel are really important and just go more in depth on the nuance behind it because a lot of times there's just not enough characters on Twitter. And another thing about it is that I get messages constantly about these things and it would be much better if I could just share that with everybody in these small little videos and just link it to other people when they ask a question. So without further ado, let's just get into this tweet here. So back in July of 2019, I wrote, my oversimplified journey. Beginner, I was 100% technical and my technicals were weak and I did not follow news. Then I became intermediate trader, 80% fundamental. I did above average, I was pretty decent at it and 20% technical, decent at it again, and no news. And then I said advanced, 50% fundamental, much stronger than average, 50% technical, very strong, and news, yes. And then I followed up that tweet with, throughout my journey, I focused hard on one aspect and later realized that I want to be as well-rounded as possible. It's okay to focus on one discipline to get a good idea, then piece it together. Know the context, know the underlying agenda, know how to execute. All right, so the very first thing that I want to make amends to coming into 2020, which is almost a year later than this um, written tweet, is that I really believe at the moment I'm more like 80, 85% technical and the remainder being fundamental. And the reason for this, which we'll get into later, is essentially that price action matters far more than what you believe or what you think will happen. Because at the end of the day, as traders, we follow the price action. We follow what is happening. We manage the risk. There is no excuse to overexpose yourself to any given stock because you believe there is a fundamental reason why it should go the other way or go in your direction. So we'll go back into that later, but let's just start at the very beginning. So as all beginners, you know, we have no understanding of the markets. We come in and we are attracted potentially to the gurus that say, hey, you don't have to know anything about fundamentals. Let's just go full technical. And as a beginner, that's very alluring because you wanna say like, hey, I now can completely ignore one aspect of trading and it makes sense, right? As a day trader, you're trading on a very short time frame relative to someone who's maybe swing trading or investing. And so why would I need to know the story? Maybe I should just trade full technical. However, your technicals are weak. And in that regard, you don't really understand how you can develop an edge. You see things such as trend lines, which are not inherently bad or bull flag, bear flag, breakouts, and think that it will be just that simple. And at this stage, in t at this point in time, I definitely was buying breakouts on the long side and wondering why every single time I would buy them, I would just get dumped on within seconds if I didn't immediately sell. However, at the time when you're paper trading or you're trading without any risk management, you put on a lot of size, you buy that breakout and you sell in the pop, all of a sudden you think that, okay, once I put money in the account, I'm gonna be making easy 5K a day. And then you just say, oh, 5K a day, um, you know, 252 trading days, I will be insanely rich, but that's not the truth. And so a lot of people do begin there. And that's definitely how I saw things. As I became more immersed in Twitter and understanding who are some people I should maybe listen to. Um, one of the big influences I did have was all day faders at team 3d stocks. You should all know him if you're following me. Um, he was very, very good about explaining the fundamental side. And he basically lit that inspiration behind my back that there was a way to know maybe what would happen in, in the stocks that I'm trading, especially in small caps. And, Pairing that with, you know, asking Ricky Analog different questions. And Ricky was very good about it. He was always saying, hey, 
you know, as much as you know about fundamentals, there is still, you still need to trade technically. That is more important. And at the time, Ricky and all the faders were the, the law when it came to this. I mean, they were the people who seemed to know the most, more than many were saying. This was before Ricky made YouTube videos for people to understand what was going on. So I had to, you know, ask questions and see what they were saying. And it just seemed to me that there was just this whole world of fundamentals that I didn't understand that I potentially could um, reach mastery and if I just focused on it. And that was kind of my goal. So I really went all in on that. I went 80%, 90% fundamentals. I would not take a trade if it didn't have dilution, if I didn't see all the warning signs that the company needed to raise cash or that you know there were other financing deals in there that I could take advantage of. And so I really limited down my set my setups to that those things and for a time it did work because I spent time, you know, analyzing what Ricky and ADF have, have said on Twitter and just in DMs and that really, really helped me build a basis that was above the average person. Again, because there was no like videos about SEC filings. The only thing you could get was maybe like, you know, with Tim Sykes or uh, Michael Good made one video or one, one DVD about SEC filings. I went through it. It was really, really hard to get through. It was very sleepy. And ultimately, like that didn't inspire me the same way that I saw from these people on Twitter. And so, you know, of course, 20% technical, you still need to be able to nail the move with good risk. You have to know when to enter, when to exit. And so I was getting a little more proficient at this. And I was completely ignoring news because what I found was that with news, a lot of times you could bias yourself into thinking, hey, this company is saying something great. But at the end of the day, a lot of times they're just trying to get people to buy up to to buy the PR, sell right into them, and then, you know, I felt that I was better off not knowing and just playing the odds that, based on fundamentals, there's a reason for it to go down. And that did work for a little bit, but, you know, of course we have to evolve as traders, and so I went to a more advanced stage, and this would probably be in like two and a half years of trading now, advanced, um, full-time, of course. 50% fundamental, much stronger than average. So this, by this point, I knew what I was going to be looking for. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't that I needed to study as much about the filings. It was like I knew what I was looking for because I've seen it so many times, repetitions, and because of that, I was able to identify what I needed quickly, and then just get to the trade. And then the 50% technical, which became very strong, was that. I went ahead and got um, more mentorship in this field, even though I was pretty decent at it. I wanted to know more, had more understanding of like the big picture, understanding where I need to be in that process. And a lot of that does come from experience. And the other part of it is just realizing that um, the, ed the edge of fundamentals does not always tell the story. We've seen so many different tickers with perceived dilution or perceived you know, people like to guess this whole um, what price do they need to close out for the MVPHS, what offerings will follow. And to me, with with fundamentals and offerings, like those are more of sweeteners for me. I don't necessarily go after them. And if it does happen, I will be there to catch it, hopefully. However, like I don't want to be relying on offerings and all these things to make a living because in my view it's very difficult to wait those out because we don't know what exactly is going on behind the scenes and so i want to just trade what i see in front of me and i'm not a swing trader i'm a day trader eventually when you do get onto that swing territory there is a case to be had for holding on a little bit longer you know after a couple of days sometimes these companies will release offerings but that's just something that i wasn't interested in because Number one, is with some brokers, it's very expensive to swing. Number two, emotionally, it's very draining. You have the the fact that you need to be watching all after hours. Sometimes they pull shenanigans. I've seen things like they let it go for an hour or two hours and after hours and boom, they will spike it, start squeezing everybody. Just random games like that. 
or you wake up in the morning and it gaps up, how many people remember the stock AWX where if you held that overnight, the next day you're done, you know? That is the thing that scared the crap out of me. So I totally avoided that. And that's the reason why I feel that you need to be mostly technical if you're gonna be trading on the shorter time frames, because uh, those moves are beyond us, you know? They are, we can guess, we can take probabilities. They can be strong probabilities, but it doesn't always work out in your favor. And I've been swinging recently, not much success to be honest. And that was with all this knowledge that I have now. So I leave that to the guys who are really, really focused on that. For me, it's more about being day in and day out. And the other very underrated thing about it is that if you are swing trading for offerings and stuff like that, um, your buying power is gonna be severely diminished in some cases with penny stocks under, um, with some brokers, I'm just gonna speak from my experience. If you trade and swing some penny stocks under 250, they'll charge you as if you were trading a $5 stock in terms of buying power. And, and then the following day, you're gonna be locked. And for someone like me who generally utilizes that buying power in multiple different trades, it's gonna be an opportunity cost where if I'm holding something, I might not be able to take another trade where I feel like I know it better. And so that's something where you need to allocate funds um, for swing positions or just have an idea of how much um, money you're actually going to be spending there. And then the, there's a lot of random technical like fees, like interest. And, you know, this just gets, it's a rabbit hole. I don't completely understand it yet. I will get there eventually. But for now, I would really recommend not being that guy. You don't need to be that person to profit in the market day in, day out, just trade well. And then finally news. So this took a long time for me to accept because what happened was before, again, I used to dabble in, I would read the news. I'd say, wow, this does seem positive. I can see how now somebody would be buying this junk because they always find a way to spin it. I mean, last Friday, literally SNCA, I believe, they released a PR saying they had like a 2,500% growth with, uh, their quarter at a six million dollars revenue when in their filings nate revealed on twitter that it was actually six thousand i mean that's a really big fail but if you read that as just coming straight into the market and you're like looking for these hidden gems that are low priced and that hopefully will make tons of return as an investor that's something you do want to see and the fact of the matter is it's a huge gamble to play on the news but the edge comes in having seen the news enough and the trends and just seeing like is this recycled does this news make sense always look at it with the eye of a skeptic like not taking it too seriously looking for the dates and numbers that are important such as conference calls especially you know those are very important we've seen different plays like uabs or gnus reacting to these calls and you need to be aware of that as a trader because that can have an influence on exactly what you're doing and you're going to have to be prepared for sharp moves one way or the other and if you're not ready for that then don't trade it but at least be aware because that is a huge disadvantage for people that are not aware and they get caught off guard they could end up losing tons of money the other thing about news is you want to be able to spot like what specific news makes things run so sometimes there are news that is legitimate sometimes it's fueled by the greater economy world news sometimes it's fueled just by their own positive outlook sometimes they have actually produced something really strong and when you see stocks i would highly recommend that when you see something running take note of what actually was the catalyst for that and then just keep that in your head or when you see things fading and you thought one way or another about the news now look at reflect on that and just say hey what actually happened there like this looked good like this company is merging or being bought out or they had positive phase news like why is it still dying and that is just another piece of the puzzle it's better in my opinion to just be aware of all these things like if you are leaning in the same way i was like to one extreme 
you really miss out on the other aspects of the market and being ignorant is not really going to serve you over the long run like it's better to just be aware even if it's just quick you know quick process one minute two minutes just to skim through these things you want to be able to look at the fundamentals and say hey they have the ability to dilute or they have very poor cash flow things like that you want to obviously know what the float is you want to know market cap potentially some people pay more attention than others um you know just basic things see what works for you what where there's a correlation and then tune your strategy over time and that's why experience is a big thing because i can't necessarily tell you one thing and just have you blindly trust what i say because i could be wrong or you know the next time i say hey this news is usually bullish and then it tanks like it's always going to be a probability game in trading so again the amendment that i would make nowadays is someone going into his like third well i'm i'm over three years of full-time trading is that i'm now morally more like 80 85 percent technical and the rest fundamental so the way i view it is that as a trader i'm looking for setups that fit my technicals and when they do i'll take them when do fundamentals come into factors when i look over what's going on in the fundamental section and if i see something that piques my interest or that i know is known to work well for me then i will go ahead and use that to inform or ask the question should i be potentially doubling up should this be an a plus setup for me should i put a little bit more risk and if yes then i will and that's kind of how i use fundamentals just inform decision making when it comes to size quality of play but overall you should know the majority of that technically and a lot of times there will be trades that are just full technical as the coronavirus sector has hit small caps in a big way and just the greater market some of the moves can be irrational some of the moves can be you know with insane volume and you can totally look at that from a full technical perspective not know the news not know fundamentals just look where their supply demand imbalance is pick your spots and that will be profitable i mean you really don't need to know one thing or the other um, completely and you can rely on one thing potentially but from my experience i would say that it's better to look at each thing and then assign a little bit of um you know how much you value each thing to your decision making process and it's going to be different for everyone of course i look for my specific things but i just wanted to make an amendment to this because someone brought it up recently and that is all for this video thanks if you enjoyed it hopefully it wasn't too long and i'll see you guys next time thanks